Hi, I'm George, and we'll be doing this Photoshop Elements Draw Circle Portrait with these squares in a circle all the way around that portrait as well. Now, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to click on share. Also, make sure you subscribe and click on that little bell icon so you get the notifications of any of my new videos. I do several new videos every single week, and you don't want to miss any of those. Also, if you want to learn a lot more about Photoshop Elements, take a look at my complete training course, and there's a link for that right down there in the description. Okay, let's get to it. Everything inside of this Photoshop Elements Draw Circle Portrait is done inside of Photoshop Elements except for the picture right in the middle there. For that, I just have this photograph right here. Now, if you want to use this picture for the project, take a look at the description and you'll find a link in there to grab this from my website. Okay, we'll start this off. I'm just going to close that down. There we go. And we'll make a brand new file, File New and Blank File. I'll put this at the default Photoshop Elements size, which is 6x4 at a resolution of 300, and choose OK. Let's dock that right there. There we go. Now I want to put the circle right in the center, so I'll pull guidelines in. So make sure you have your rulers shown. Go up here to View and make sure that rulers is checked. Also, make sure that guides is shown, so we'll be doing guides in there. And on Snap 2, Snap 2 guides needs to be checked as well. That all looks good. Okay, let's grab a guide, just pull it straight down, and it should snap right to the center. If it doesn't snap to center, double check your snap to and make sure that document balance also is checked. Now that's a default, so it should be okay, it should already be checked. Okay, let's pull one in from the left hand side, pull it right to the center, and it should snap into position. There it is. And then come right down here with this tool right there. This is the ellipse tool. Now on this one, there it is. Make sure you set at circle, little drop down list right there and come down and check from center. Now just place the cross here right across the top there of that center point. When you're right there at that center point, click and drag out and it will make a circle pulled right from the center. Now pull it out so it's about that far so you have some space there above and below the circle. And that puts a black circle right on the page and that's perfect. Okay now let's just hide these guidelines. We're done with those actually so I'll just go up here to view. I'm just going to uncheck guys and just hide that. There we go. Let's now change the background. If you go over here to graphics and go up to the top up here, make sure that's set at backgrounds. It should be set at by type and backgrounds. And the one I want is right down here. It's called blue swirly and it's down quite a ways. There's the top. I'll just come quite a ways down here. See there's kind of a baseball diamond right there. It's below that. There it is. And again, it's blue swirly. Click on that one. That's going to change the background into this blue thing with these little swirly effects in there. Almost Celtish looking kind of somewhat. Now if there's a little blue triangle like that in that top right corner, you'll have to download this from the internet. It's done automatically. The way this works in Photoshop Elements is that they don't install all of these things on your computer. They only download them to your computer when you need to use them. That just saves space on your hard drive. So if you had that little blue triangle, just make sure that you have internet access running right now, and then you can go ahead, click on that. You'll quickly see a download, and you can then switch over. Let me just show you that with this one right here. I'll click on this. There's a download, and then it changes it. It's just that fast. Once you've downloaded it, it's on your computer. So if you switch back over here again, it's very, very quick. Okay, there we go. So there's our new background that's taken care of. Let's now go back up to layers, and we'll now put in that circle of squares, those little squares. Go back up here to the shape. And it's a little hard to see this. So I'm going to zoom in here at the top. There we go. There's the top. Go to the Type tool. I have my text set at Arial Regular. I'm going to set the tracking here at just the zero. Tracking, you'll find this if you have Photoshop Elements 2019 or 2020, and this really does help on this one effect. It's a real good use for that particular track until you don't have to have it, but it does improve this a little bit. The size I have set here at 60 points, it just works out well. And you can see here, if I have my cursor inside, I get that cursor symbol and then a circle around it. If I go outside, it's a little hard to see here, but there's a square around it. If I'm right on the edge of this shape, 
is that I-beam and then a squiggly mark. That's what you want to see. I want to be right on that edge. Click at that point. There is the insertion point. And now I'm going to be using a special keyboard shortcut. It's the Alt key and then use the keypad to the right side of your keyboard. So Alt key and then I type in 0183. And that's this square shape right there. It's a special shape. If you don't have the keyboard on the right side of your keypad, then this won't work for you. This one little trick won't work for you. But there are ways to get around that. You actually can grab this and then paste it in from different programs that will show you character maps. Let me bring up one of those here for Windows, the standard character map in Windows. You'll find this if you go to the Start menu, go down to Windows Accessories and System Tools, and inside there you'll find the character map. Okay, here is the Windows character map, and you'll find that right here, right next to that paragraph symbol. It's that one right there. If you click on that, you can select that, copy it, and then just paste it over here. That also works if you don't happen to have that keypad on the right-hand side, the numeric keypad, but most computers have that. Okay, so there it is. I'm now going to just select that. Just pull the cursor over like that. I'll do a Control C to copy, and then click over here, and then Control V to paste. So that's all it is, just Control C to copy, and then a Control V to paste. Now I can just hit that Control V and keep on pasting those around. Let's zoom out a little bit here. Go to our zoom tool, and I'll just back out. I'll go to fit screen. There it is. Back up to the text tool. Let me click right next to that one. And then again, the Control V. And I'll just keep in typing these in until I get that whole circle of these things clear around our big circle. And so clear up to the top. Now it's not going to fit exactly right there. It's a little bit wide at the top. We can fix that. Go up here next to this one. I'm going to pull around like that. That selects all of those. And now we can adjust the tracking and try to fix that space. If I come up here to a negative 5. That works out really well. So just a little negative 5 on that tracking. And they now look nice and evenly spaced. That's all you have to do. Just a little tracking adjustment. You may need to go positive, you may need to go negative. I would just try one see how it works and you can you know, go further up if you need to or further down depending upon which way works for that particular image or symbol that you're using. Now this trick here will work with any symbol that you want. You can use letters on this, you know, anything you want to just repeat it clear around the outside edge. But there you go, there's our dots. Let's just choose OK. Now I want to see the background through these dots a little bit. Right now they're just solid black. I want it a bit better than that. So let's bring our opacity down on that. Click on the opacity here, and I'm just going to type in 75, so 75% hit the Enter key. So just a little bit of see-through, and it helps to blend those into the background a bit. Okay, so far so good. Now all we have to do is bring our picture inside here. So let's bring that up. I have that down in my photo bin. Right there, I'll bring her up. There it is. And let's just pull her like this so she's floating. I'll grab her background layer and pull it onto this file, and then minimize that again. Now I want to see the big dot down here through this image and I also want to have her underneath those dots. So I'll pull it straight down so her layer is right above that black dot layer. Let's now change her layer to about 50%. Doesn't need to be exact, just somewhere around the middle so you can see that dot through her image. We now can grab the control handles for the picture and pull those in and resize her picture until she fits properly. Okay, she's okay at the top. Let me pull the bottom out now so the bottom fills up that circle. So I want her just a little bit larger than the circle. And then you can just you know position that. I think right about here looks pretty good. So she's just inside of that, just fills that circle up. Click on the green check mark for OK. Let's set her back up to 100%. And now we need to put her inside of that circle. And that's real easy to do. Just right click where it says layer 1. That's the layer that she's on. And come down to Create Clipping Mask. And that puts her inside of whatever you have on the layer right below. There it is. So there is that image inside of that circle. Last thing left to do is put kind of a beveled effect on this. And for that, we'll use layer styles. And you put those on this layer right here. So click on that circle layer. Come down to Styles button. And then here I, I have this one selected right there. Just click on that. And that gives you that indented style. Now you can try different ones, but I want to show you something about that if you do that. Well, first, let's take a look at our layers. You can see right there, we're still on this circle layer. Let's go back over here to Styles. I'm going to switch over. Let's just 
undo this one step. That's the best way to do this is to undo one step. So I'll go up to edit and this undo apply style. There it is. Now if we go back to layers, you'll see how the selected layer has now jumped up to her layer up here. That's what you have to watch out for if you want to try several of these things. So let's just do a couple of so you can see this. Let's come down to the circle shape. There it is. Go back to styles. I'll put this one on. There it is. So you get that edge effect. If I undo that, edit, undo apply style, go back to layers, and again it's jumped back up to that picture. So if you're trying different styles, you'll have to go back here each time and reselect the circle and then go back to styles again. Let's come down to this one, double click, and there is that effect. So there it is. That's our nice Photoshop Elements Draw Circle Portrait with these interesting little squares around the outside as a decorative element. And don't forget, if you like this video, hit that like button. Also hit that share button. Doing that helps to allow me to make more of these videos. Also make sure you subscribe and take a look at my complete training course for Photoshop Elements. And a link for that is right down there in the description. Okay, and I'll see you next time.